the AL East, who do you have? Uh, I have Toronto number one. Uh, I think they have a dynamic offense. I, I would like to see Troy Tulowitzki kind of get that form back. He kind of he kind of slumped a little bit down the shred. I think what they they have a dynamic offense. The biggest question with them though is the pitching, uh, and we saw it. We saw we, they ran into that problem along with Colt Bats during the playoffs. Was you know the, like and this goes back to what I said with the Mets. You know, pitching is uh, it's only going to get you is it's going to carry your team. And when you look at what the, um, excuse me, what the Blue Jays have, while I pull this up really quick, uh, when you look at things, I mean, you're, they're going to need a big year out of Marcus Stroman to even stay relevant. Um, I, I can't count on R.A. Dickey to win 15 to 20 games. Uh, I, I also can't, you know, Estrada, you don't really know what you're going to get. J.A. Hab, Drew Hutchinson, things like that. Uh, the pitching's going to carry need to carry them, and they're going to need a big year from their rotation. But I think their offense is good enough to win the AL East. Uh, number two, I have Boston. Uh, I think their pitching got solidified over the offseason with Price and Kimbrell coming in. Uh, the big X factors, though, are Hanley, Ramirez, and uh, Pablo Sandoval, who – uh, <laughs> got bench today. Yeah, I see that. Or <laughs> Kent State alumni Travis Shaw, shout out, uh, and who's making five hundred thousand dollars a year. So your ninety-five million dollar man's getting benched for Travis Shaw, uh, which says a lot. So I, but I still think you know I think the offense is there and I think the pitching's gonna be fine. I think the I think the back end of that rotation, outside of Price and Buckholds, I think is gonna be really good. Uh, it's going to surprise some people. So I have Boston number two. Uh, the Yankees, I have number three. You know, they solidified the bullpen. They're trying to go for the Royals approach with uh, with their bullpen. But you need a starting rotation to do so. And Tanaka, you got to make sure you, you're not sure if he, he's going to be healthy. You can't ever really put a full load on somebody who's coming off of Tommy John surgery. Uh, and Pineda, I think, is going to be good. And their offense... Their offense is getting old, man. Let's be. Yeah, honest. I mean, it, it really. Their is. offense is getting old. I mean, you got a Rod playing DH, hitting fifth. Uh, you you got bigger problems to worry about. So, I mean, they're gonna be they're gonna be a solid third. They're they're gonna have about a five hundred year, I think. Uh, number four, I have Tampa Bay. I think they have uh, young pitching with a lot of talented arms, but I think uh, the lack of power hitting is gonna really uh, really ruin it for them this year. Uh, and it's going to kind of restrain them. You can't count on Evan Longoria to hit 50 home runs. And uh, number five, I have the Orioles. They are going to blow this year. <laughs> uh, Ubaldo Jimenez is your number one starter. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the, I just think the others are going to be bad. And you can't put that all on Manny Machado and Adam Jones to try and carry them. Uh, so I have the O's number five. I have... Uh, the Red Sox number one. Okay. I just, it's more because of the Blue Jays, and it's more because of the Blue Jays pitching, and I just okay. don't trust. I can see that. The Blue Jays pitching. Okay, I can see that. Um, but everything else, like I love the Blue Jays offense. Mhm. But again, unless they make a deal to get more pitching, like they did last year with Price. Yeah. Again, I can't trust R. A. Dickey, and I can't mm-hmm. trust. Uh, Strowman to win you 15 plus games and that's exactly what they're gonna need especially in this division yep um number three the Yankees Mm -hmm. they definitely need they need to get another bat I think yeah well Um, they need to get a bat that's not over the age of 35 exactly and and (laughs) you know kind of going through um you know potential trades I think Jay Bruce would be perfect you yes. put him in right field. You could platoon yep. him with Carlos Beltran. Yep. You can't trust A Rod at what is it, forty three years old to hit you twenty five home runs. Oh, no, you can't. They'll be lucky to get five. They'll be honestly, if they got five home runs out of A Rod, they'll be calling that a success. Well, well they well, thought New that was a success fans, last year, well, but New they York got him twenty seven. Called a success, year, something but, like that. Yeah, New York fans won't call it a success, but because they're New York fans, but you know, whatever. Fuck them. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then I have. Let's see, who do I have? I have the Orioles at four and at fifth the Rays. And okay. just because the Orioles, um, their their offense is just way better. And I know that's a little bit of a contradiction for like, <laughs> the, the Red Sox and the Blue Jays, but yeah. I think when you have someone like David Price 
to a and to anchor your starting rotation, and you have Craig Campbell as mm -hmm. your closer. Mm -hmm. I think that just solidifies like everything. And then if you're not that top tier, I think it just goes to offense. Yeah. And yeah, I love Chris Archer, but they don't have any offense at all. They don't. They don't. They they win with they win with singles and doubles. You know, and you need power hitting. You know, honestly, if you put if you put side by side the offense with the Rays and the O's, um, I mean, you have one power hitter for Longoria. And like that's probably their, that's probably it for them. And then you have for the O's, you have Machado and Adam Jones. You know, if you're deciding four and five, simple, two to one. Exactly. Or, I mean, I just think the Orioles. I think they need more than Machado and Jones to carry them, and uh, they're going to find those struggles this year. Yeah, and you can't really trust uh, Chris Davis. Uh, you can't really trust Mark Trumbo, even though he's had a, a pretty good spring. Yeah. Uh, Matt Weeders, you know, any he, he's one of the best offensive catchers in the league. Mm -hmm. But at 270, is he gonna? He's not gonna, you know, carry an offense. No, 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 no. So that's again one of the only reasons why I picked the Orioles at four and the Rays at uh, five. Absolutely. All right, the AL West. Who do you have? Uh, I have Houston number one. I think they're, uh, uh, I th and also I think this is a must watch division. I think it's a three team race: Houston, Texas, Seattle on the outside looking in. Uh, I think see, I think Houston. I, I like their pitching better than uh, Texas, to be honest. Um, and I think we saw what they can do last year. I think this year, I think George Springer is going to explode this year and uh, just be lights out for the Astros. Uh, so I like Houston. Uh, I think that a lot of their pieces are back from uh, what I was uh, told. So I think they'll be in a good spot. I have Houston number one. I have Texas uh, number two. Um, I have Seattle number three. You know, with a new regime, with a new regime change, uh, it always kind of shakes things up. But I, I, you know, the pieces are there. They just need like two more bats and another pitching arm, and they'll be set. Uh, so I mean, for right now, assuming they don't make those deals, I have Seattle number three. Uh, Angels number four. I mean, they didn't really get anyone other than Angels and Simmons. And when you look at it, 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 you got rid of Josh Hamilton, but I don't think that's going to solve everything. I think it's still about an 85 win team. Um, you know, and then Oakland, Sonny Gray. Yay. That's, that's about it. Yeah, exactly. I'm exactly on board with everything you just said. Uh, well, I have... It, it kind of is boring. Um, <laughs> the, I mean, the Astros, I think they have the best pitching in their division. They have the best lineup yeah. in their division. Um, the Rangers, I, 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 I don't see the gap between two and three as small as I think you do. But I, I think I think the gap between two and three that I'm looking at, I th that's assuming, in my opinion... Um, that's assuming Seattle, everything clicks for them. Uh, you know, when they when you saw those on paper, they you know the staff isn't lights out. You know, obviously Felix Hernandez is going to be everything for that team. You know, but I, I like uh, Iwakuma. Uh, Ty John Walker, we saw can can definitely bring it. Uh, Wade Miley's not as bad as you think either, and Nate Carnes is going to be, you know, Nate Carnes, it's not great four and five pitching. I mean, it's not the Giants pitching, for, for goodness sakes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think uh, they need everyone but Felix Hernandez to be great. <laughs> and so it's a tall task. I think it's a solid 500 team. I, I agree. Like, 500, but that's why I think the Rangers, I think they're in that. 85 to 89, 90 win, if everything goes right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I do think that Seattle need desperately needs another bat. Um, yeah. You can't have your right field you can't, you can't pl rely. platooning you, Seth Smith and Franklin Gutierrez. Yeah, you can't rely on Seth Smith, Cano, Cruz, Seager, your two, three, four, five. You yeah. know, I mean, Adam Lynn could be your six, but then after that, I mean, Chris Ionetta, really? Yeah. Leonis Martin, yeah. and then you're, and then you have Marte, the rookie, who I think he'll be uh, probably in the discussion for rookie. Uh, yeah, but, we'll, yeah. but we'll get to that. Yeah, I, I think he'll be a solid two two seventy hitter this year. So, but to your, to what you said though. All right, uh, the AL Central, the one that. All right, I did win totals for these strictly because you know we're in Cleveland, so mm -hmm. the so. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> uh, so, uh, number one, I have Kansas City uh, to take a piece from Ric Flair, uh, 16-time World Wrestling Federation champion. Uh, to be the champs, you've got to beat the champs. Uh, nobody can do it yet. I think this is a loaded team. I think this is a savage team. Uh, we'll get to that story in a minute, though. Uh, I have 95 wins for this team this year. Uh, number two, I have Detroit. Uh, I have the offense. I think the offense is going to be reloaded. The offense is reloaded, obviously, you know, with Justin Upton, things like that. The pitching is the X factor. You know, Justin Verlander, he's not going to get you 20, 23 or 24 wins anymore. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Jordan Zimmerman can come in and do. And the pitching's got to stay healthy. In the end, though, I still think they win about 90 games. Uh, this might be where we get into a little disagreement here. Number three, I have the White Sox. Um, I think. Yes, like I said with the National League videos, uh, the pitching carries you through the postseason. But I think the Indians pitching outside of Kluber and Carrasco and Salazar, the back of the rotation, scares the living heck out of me. Uh, And I think Chicago has – it's about even, but I give the slight edge to Chicago on the back of the rotation pitching. And also, I think the offense is better right now with the White Sox. I think they're going to be able to get off to a better start. Uh, so I have the White Sox in a close third. I have the Indians in fourth. Uh, I have the White Sox, by the way, winning 85 games. Excuse me. And I have the Indians about 500, about 82 wins. Uh, and then I have uh, Minnesota in fifth. Uh, they got a lot of young pieces. They're going to be fun to watch this year with uh, Byung Ho Park, uh, uh, Byron Buxton, the former top prospect, as well as uh, Sano is going to be coming up as well. They have a lot of young talent. It's going to be a fun team to watch, but they're not here yet. They're about 70, 75 win team right now. I, I agree with you on the Royals. Uh, mm-hmm. I agree with you on the Tigers. Now, okay. basically, two to four can easily be swapped. I think there's probably, I think like you just said, there's probably five to six wins just between them. And I think that's what either gets you the second wild card yeah, or the fourth spot in the division. Okay. Um, I, th- I think what, what exactly do you think could lead Detroit to not finish second? Because uh, when you pitching. put that offense on paper, compared, I mean, you saw Miguel Cabrera. You know, you have you have all these pieces coming back. They're healthy. You and then you add Justin Upton. It's hard not to put that offense in the number two slot. I, it's hard. It, it is hard. But can can I trust Miguel Cabrera to stay healthy? Um, can I trust Victor Martinez to give you two eighty? And that's why that's why you bring Justin Upton in, though. Yeah, but can I trust Justin Upton? Also, I, I, I just... I, oh, I, th- I think he's going to flourish, to be perfectly honest. I think he's going to... Uh, uh, and I think he's going to come in like what Cespedes did for his year in uh, Detroit. I think he's going to come in and flourish. I think he's going to be coming in and be a serviceable piece. Uh, you know, I think when they, when the, what they bring in in offense, uh, especially with, like, Jose Iglesias, things like that, that I th- it's hard to put that offense ahead of Chicago or Cleveland. No, I, I agree. Offensively, they're... Mm-hmm way above the Indians or the White Sox. Yeah. But I I cannot trust Victor Martinez. I don't know if I could trust Justin Upton. Um, I don't know if I could trust uh, Castellanos. And I don't know if I could trust Mike Palfrey, uh, Green, Norris, if if he gets in. I, he'll probably be their fifth starter eventually. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I don't want to get screwed over like I did last year and thinking that the Tigers were this unbeatable team. Yeah. And, I mean, in their bullpen, they still have some question marks. Um, they did uh, get yeah. Rodriguez. Be healthy. But. Uh, I would agree with that. Other than that, do, do you trust uh, Lowe? Do you trust Wilson? It's it's kind of hard to. Um, I, I thought, well, I, you know, that's, that's kind of the million dollar question. I like Mark Lowe, uh, what he brought to the table last year. Uh, you know, when you look at, um, you know, I think Mark Lowe, he's going to be a solid, solid middle, middle reliever, uh, kind of situation. When you also look at, uh, some of these other guys who, uh, the other guy you brought up, uh, the name's already escaping me. Um, uh, Wilson, uh, Hardy. yes, Wilson, Wilson. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think last year, you know, he, he showed last year in New York. He can, uh, he's a young arm that I think can contribute in that bullpen. 
you know, with, you know, five and zero last year in New York with a with an ERA of three, appearing in seventy four games. You know, I think uh, you can show it shows that he can produce. But the question is, you know, like I brought up with my reasoning for them not putting them ahead of the Royals is uh, they got the pitching has to stay healthy. I think if the pitching can stay healthy, I think they're a solid ninety one team. I do you also agree. I know this will be kind of giving away your prediction, but the second place division or second place in the AL Central gets one of the wild cards. Uh, yes. Okay, I agree with you. I think whoever's at number two is gonna get it, whether it's the Indians, the White Sox, or the Tigers. Um, the Indians. We'll get to more of the Indian stuff later, mm-hmm. but uh, I think. Once you add up all their little pieces, and this may be the Indians homer in me, they could they low key have a solid lineup. Whether and again you're banking on uh Lindor hitting two eighty, you're banking on uh Napoli not playing like he did in uh Boston last year with his uh what was it, two hundred average, two twenty <laughs> average. Um you're, you're also banking on Napoli being able to play every day. Uh, that that is also you know, that that body's not getting much younger, to be honest. And and you know, I, he was quoted at a press conference, I think, saying the reason he came to Cleveland was the the idea of playing every day. Homeboy, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and they, there's an X factor on that team that you're going to need production out of because you know, let's be real, Napoli's not going to play every day. But we'll get to that later. Exactly. Please. We'll yeah. we'll get to all that later. Um, the White Sox. I I love Chris Sale. I love. Mm-hmm. Uh, Austin Jackson. I, I was hoping the Indians were gonna sign him, but uh, I like the idea. Again, going back to the Indians, going with Naquin. Um, but with the White Sox, I just um, their back end of the, of the rotation is still a little bit questionable. Mm-hmm. They still don't have uh, other than uh, Robinson, their closer. Mm-hmm. Their bullpen is still a little sus- uh, suspect. Mm-hmm. But again, if any, if everything clicks with them, again, like I keep saying, two to four could easily be changed either yeah, way. Yeah, I have two to four, a nine win difference. Exactly. You know, I mean, like, right now, separate you. I have the Tigers at two, the Indians at three, and the White Sox at four, and then okay. uh, the Twins at five. And it's not because, again, I think there'll be a. a Fun team to watch, but their rotation, I just, I just can't their trust them. Bad. <laughs> it really is. You got, bad, you bad, got the right. uh, huge. Nolasco ain't, Nolasco ain't no number one starter. God, well, they, they gave him what sixty million for. They gave, a few they, gave years. Him, they gave him fifty nine million too many, but that's beyond the point. <laughs> that is beyond the point. Hey man, hey man, you know you got, you got, you got to get money and make money. So congrats to him, but keep getting them checks. Yeah. All right, uh, AL MVP. Uh, I think it's Trout's to lose. I think Correa is going to give him a run for his money. If Correa has a big year, if Trout falls on a slump this year, uh, I don't think it's really that good of an uh, of an Angels team. If he can't carry them this year, I think it's Correa. But I think you know, in the end, uh, he is the he is the five tool star uh, for years to come. I still think it's Trout. I completely agree. Trout, um, maybe Batista, maybe uh, Donaldson. But he, he, I think Donaldson, between the two Blue Jays, I think Donaldson has a better shot, personally. Uh, I think what he, what his proje- production, uh, what he was able to do last year, I think, uh, kind of outshined uh, all of that. And I think the biggest thing, um, unless they, unless I've been hiding under a rock, uh, they haven't, have they come to a new contract for Batista yet or no? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, not, I think not, I, not what I, I've seen. You know, people always say that that doesn't hang over you, but let's be real, time out, it does. Uh, so I, I think Donaldson has a better chance than Batista personally, but yeah, like you said, you know, try, it's Trout's to lose. Uh, if Correa goes off on some record-breaking tear, I think he would win. But in the end, it's still Trout. All right, uh, AL Cy Young Ward. Uh, this is questionable because you know I could easily be a homer and just pick any of the any of the Indians, mm-hmm. uh, assuming they have a good year. Or David Price, but I think if Tanaka can rebound, I think it's his uh, this year. But that all depends on the health. If he can uh, have a full season, have a uh, return to that same success when he came back, when he came to the U.S. Uh, 
I think it's Tanaka. I have Chris Sale. That would be, uh, he'd be my top three. I just, I think he's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I just, he, 200 strikeouts, and I think it was, when he came in third, he had over 200 strikeouts and 180 innings, if that. Yep. Yep. I mean, that's just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Um, that That's why, like, two to four in the Central can easily uh, sw- swap with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, AL Rookie of the Year. Um, this, I, I think uh, it, it could go it could go a lot of different ways, to be honest. Because uh, a lot of these stars that came out of the American League, um, it a lot of them came up, you know, to the to the uh, just early enough uh, to be not considered for last year's Rookie of the Year. Uh, the guy, I think, I, I think he's gonna have a big year. Uh, I think Joey Gallo from the Rangers. Uh, he, I really like what he brings up to the table. I think he's a good power hitter. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, it, he strikes out about more than 46% of the time, which he'll need to adjust. But I think he's the odds-on favorite right now. I like him. I like Buxton. I do, uh, too. For the Twins, I think between them, I think uh, Buxton will play the most. Yes, I would agree. So Buxton's I think that's a, why Buxton's he's an everyday center fielder. I think that's one of the only reasons why I put him as my AL Rookie of the Year, um, mm-hmm. just because he's going to get the at bats, he's going to get the games. Uh, the Twins aren't trying to win this year, really. Yeah. But the Rangers are. Yeah. And that's exactly why, if uh, Gallo struggles, they're not going to keep him in. Got him, yeah. So that's literally the only reasons why I. Yeah, I buy that. Uh, manager of the year, AL manager. Uh, John Gibbons. Uh, I think if uh, and I think I honestly I think it, it it will be a toss up between Kansas City and whoever wins the AL East. Uh, <laughs> uh, but in the end, I do I do think uh, Toronto wins the AL East. So therefore, I do think John Gibbons uh, with the talent he had, they have on offense, uh, and assuming that the pitching does carry for the Blue Jays and they're able to take the AL East, I think that'll speak volumes about what he's able to do in Minnesota. Uh, excuse me, Toronto. Where did I get Minnesota from? Uh, so I do think John Gibbons from Toronto will be manager of the year. I have John Farrell. Okay. Um, I think, like I had in my predictions, the Red Sox are going to win the AL East. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, and it's just a good feel-good story. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. With the, with well, the cancer nobody... and... We call it feel-good. But... Well, yeah. But um, I think... Him coming back and leading the team. Yeah. It, it's it's almost like the 2013 Red Sox with the uh, Boston bombing. Like, everything mm-hmm. just kind of went their way. Yeah. Um, So, I just think, feel good story. I'm going with John Farrell. Okay. All right. So, who do you have in your AL playoff bracket? Uh, My AL, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, my AL bracket, I have Kansas City obviously being the best team, and I have them, uh, actually, excuse me, I have them with the second best uh, record in the American League. I think Toronto has the best record this year with their offense. So I have Toronto playing the winner of the wild card game, which will be Detroit, uh, which I have Toronto advancing. And then I have Kansas City beating Houston in a full five game series. Uh, so, and then I have Kansas City beating Toronto in six games to move on to the World Series. I have the Royals being the number one seed. Got it. And they're playing the. Uh, I have the Rangers winning the wild card. Okay. It's going to be, again, the Rangers and whoever's the number two. And I picked Detroit. Okay. Um, they're going to lose. Uh, the Rangers are going to lose to the Royals, and it's going to end up being the Royals against the Astros. Okay. And I have the Astros coming out of the AL. Okay. I think... You, wait, you have the Astros coming out of here? I do. I do. Ah, wow. Um, I just... I, I have this I'm feeling listening. with the Royals. Where's yours? I'm listening. Um, That's just a lot of baseball in three years. And I think eventually... Like, I think this year, someone's going to blow a tire in the playoffs or right at the end. Yeah. And they're just going to stop and it's going to be someone new. And I think the Astros are young enough... And I also think that they were so close yet last year to beating the uh, 
I think they were five outs away t- of and beating uh, the uh, oh, Yankees. No, were, no, yeah, they were, no, it wasn't the Yankees. Uh, oh, this is gonna, this is gonna bother me now. No, the, it was the Yankees because they they were. Uh, no, they beat the Yankees in the wild card. Okay, then who was it? Tor- was it Toronto? No, Toronto played the Rangers. I think. Hang on, we'll, we're we're gonna get to the bottom of this. But keep talking while I. No, keep, but keep I just tell th- me, keep telling me why the Rangers are gonna win while I figure this out. Uh, I just think the, the Astros, um, they're pitching. Excuse me, the Astros. Yeah, oh, God, I'm a mess. No, it's it's cool. Uh, the Astros are pitching. Um, I think I love their lineup. I yeah. with with Gomes, with Springer, with mm-hmm. Altuve, with Correa. Um, yeah, you're. It's a question mark with Valbuena at third base and uh, <laughs> White at first base. But yeah. I did hear that they're trying to get P.J. Tucker to okay. first base. I, I'd buy that. And if, if they do that and if everything works out good, that's another 25 home runs they could get. Absolutely. So, and their rotation is is still very solid, very young. Um, their bullpen, getting uh, Giles from Philadelphia, was a friggin' steal. Yeah. They didn't give up anything for him. And that just solidifies... Their bullpen, yeah. him going nine, Gregerson and Nishak going eight. You have Tony Sip in there. You have Wani Rodriguez as your matchup lefties, and you still have uh, Will Harris as a middle uh, inning guy. But I just, I just love their lineup. I love their young pitching, mm-hmm. and I just think they, they could be a dark horse. And I think this year they, they get over the hump and beat the Royals. And by the way, by the way, it was they played the Royals last year. Game four, they had a chance to put them away, and they gave up five in the eighth to the Royals and two in the ninth to lose by three, which forced a game five, in which uh, they lost, they they got blown out like seven to two. So Astros, they were five out, they were like six outs away from being the from eliminating the Royals, but uh, could Tony Sip could not close the deal. I think I just had a flashback to 2011, 2012 Indians with Tony Sip. <laughs> Talk about that. Man, the that's bullpen mafia, case. though. The bullpen mafia. That's, that's <laughs> with, right. <podcast>. With, <laughs> <laughs> that is, it really is. Let's go down to memory lane. Uh, Chris Perez and Vinny Pistano. Mm. We try to convince ourselves that, okay, yeah, trade Chris Perez. We have Vinny Pistano in the world. Joe, man, Joe. I, I could go on and on about Joe Smith stories, but I'm I'm not that savage. But uh, don't you know who he is? Come I, on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> All right, so who do you have as your World Series champion? Um, I think between Kansas City and San Francisco, I do think uh, both teams line up. But in the end, um, I think pitching prevails. And in this case, I have the Giants winning in six games. I have the Chicago Cubs finally stop, stop. winning the World Series stop. against the Uh-oh. Houston Astros. Ugh, gross. <laughs> gross. I'd, rather, I'd rather have the Astros win. Yeah, that's disgusting. Why? Because as Cleveland fans, we can not we can hold on to being the, the long-suffering Indians since 1948. No, because when we will be the long suffering. No, Indians. that's exactly. We 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 can wear it with pride. You know? Oh man, I wear enough crap with uh, with pride in this town. No, no. It's that's it's it's gonna thing. happen, and I think w- the thing is with the Cubs when they when they have to play the Astros <sighs> with the DH, like it's not even gonna affect them because they're no, so uh, stacked. Yeah. They, oh, what are they going to do? They're going to put uh, <coughs> one of their outfielders. They're going to put uh, uh, Kyle uh, Schwarber as their DH. And yeah, then still well, have... they did last year. They made Schwarber DH. Exactly. They yeah. put Solaire... I, be, I believe it was Solaire they put out in the outfield. I mean, you know, you can go either way with them. I, I have, I'm a firm believer in uh, National League hitters adapting, struggling to adapt with American League pitching. And I think... I, I just think that preva- that prevails... And I think the Royals, I think, in my opinion, are going to struggle if the if it's Royals Giants. I think they're going to struggle with uh, the Giants pitching one to five on a, on a one to five basis. I if if that happens, I do agree. And plus, it's an even year. 
<laughs> it's an even year. It's 2016. That'd be, that'd be 2010, 2012, 2014, and 2016 with the Giants. It My is God. What, a, what a time to be alive. And you know what? That, that would mean that what's even more odd, on the odd years, they never made the playoffs. Really? Yep. I, I'm huh. like 95% sure they, wow. they never made Because it was always the, the Cardinals. It was always the the Pirates as pi, it was. I think it was one year Pirates in Cincinnati as the wild card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was the Cubs the last year. Uh, yeah. The Dodgers. Uh, the Dodgers were, like every year. Exactly. But. So, <laughs> all right. So let's let's 